Nicola, if anyone understands the assignment, it's you. <laughs> I take that very seriously. I take the assignment deadly seriously, so thank you for that. You are incredible. <laughs> you are a vision. I'm obsessed. Thank you very much. That's okay. Thank you. What a year, though. I mean, between Derry Girls, between Bridgerton, yeah. and then arguably the most important was your RuPaul's Drag Race appearance. I mean, one of the best days of my life. Yeah. I just saw Bimini right now, just walking past. Like, I am so obsessed with Drag Race. Doing that was like an out-of-body experience. The first time you see Ru is when Ru walks yeah. out in full drag on the runway. So it was like a very biblical, god-like moment. Yeah. I remember seeing on Twitter or Instagram afterwards, you were like, my eyelash came off because I was genuinely crying. I think it was because of Veronica Green. Or... I cried so much. Yeah. I cried so much that literally they both flopped off and they were like, oh, and they had to rush me off and like stick them back on me. That genuinely happened. Yeah. Can I ask what your highlight of the year was? Would be because it, it, it's, it's a tough one having to like compare Bridget and Derry Girls and RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh gosh, I don't know. I feel very lucky to have been able to do both shows and to have them like come out. And I think the response to them is so lovely and warm. I feel like people have a lot of love for both of them. So to be involved in that in any way is just really special. And we're back to Bridgerton really soon, so it's like not stopping. It's amazing. It's, just, it's so good. I'm always just so happy to see everything that you're doing. Absolutely so smashing sweet. it. Thank you so much. Were you filming both Derry Girls and Bridgerton? Was there some crossover? Because I, I think I saw you say yeah. that you, they were whisking you out, getting yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank so, you to Shondaland for like making it happen. One of the many things that COVID did was push filming schedules all over the shop so Dairy Girls had four dates that moved right. so finally when it was time to film there was a little clash with Bridgerton but yeah Shondalem were amazing and stepped in and tried to make everything work but the next episode of Dairy Girls oh it's not the next one it's the uh, what one number six I'm really, right. I'm really excited about I just love it so much she's yeah, so great it's such a special show. how do you feel knowing that this is it it's it's over now it's bittersweet, yeah. but I think also with a comedy like that, and it's about such a certain time in those girls' lives, I feel like you want to end it when it's at a high. You don't want to drag it on and have like sort of ancient, you know, dairy grannies with their Zimmer frames. Yeah, I think and the ending is really special. I think people are going to be very happy. I think they'll be happy. I think they'll also be quite sad. I'm yeah. like, and I feel like every episode, I'm like, please, not another. It means we're getting closer to the end, but it has to happen, as you say. Yeah. And it's some of the best TV. We have some of the finest in British TV here tonight. Anyone that you're like hoping like can hang out? Well, I was really excited to see Amy Lee Wood because I just shot a movie with her and she is a dreamboat angel darling. I actually saw her from the distance. I was like, that's such a pretty dress. And I was like, it's Amy. Yeah. So yeah, excited <laughs> to see Amy, excited to see. I don't know if Matthew McFadden's here. I've just thrown that one out. I just love Succession, big fan of his. Yeah. and. Just in general. Also, I'm still in that post-COVID thing of like, it's just nice to be out of the house. Just to see anyone is very exciting. Well, I'm going to let you go and fangirl, chase people, see nice dresses, get into the spirit and have the best night. Thank you so much. So good to see you. I'll see you later.